Hi, and welcome to today's session uh, with our dear friends here at uh, Wellstar Health. We're going to talk about how Wellstar digitally transformed their service desk operations to improve the customer experience. Very excited uh, for today's discussion with our guest speaker. Of course, I uh, have to provide you a couple of quick disclosures for you to keep in mind based on some of the things that we're going to cover today. But with that, let's uh, let's get started. So our guest speaker is uh, Diane Kokotoff. Diane is the uh, Executive Director of Enterprise Solutions and Automation at Wellstar Health. Uh, in her role, it's her responsibility to basically uh, take care of all of the enterprise-wide solutioning uh, and services. And Diane brings with her 30 years of IT uh, and industry experience, having worked in a number of different industries, including healthcare, uh, military, education, finance, uh, she's, for all intents and purposes, an expert in all things uh, IT help desk, customer service, governance, and of course, her main focus at Wellstar Health is to continue to find ways to optimize their operations uh, and adapt to, well, what have been very interesting times these last few years. Diane, great to have you. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Anytime, anytime. I know you're busy. So, uh, you know, what I thought would be helpful uh, was maybe kind of kickstart it with some uh, background with regards to who Wellstar Health is. So uh, tell us a little bit about Wellstar, what Wellstar does, and uh, maybe a little bit more about your role there. Absolutely. So Wellstar Health System is a healthcare system. We are only in Georgia, and we, ha- we consist of 11 hospitals, five healthcare parks, and many, many offices, 300 plus offices. We do have ServiceNow supporting our 26,000 employees um, that are including affiliates and consultants. And one of the unique things about Wellstar Health is that we actually provide the most uncompensated care than any other health system in the state of Georgia. Wow. So we've been working, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. And a lot of people say, especially if you're from Georgia, they think of some of the other Um, hospital systems, but we actually do have um, more of that uncompensated care. So we take care of a lot of folks, one in six uh, within Georgia. Wow. Wow. And I I would assume that uh, the last year and change has been, you guys have been exceptionally busy, so to speak. It it has been a very busy year uh, in the state of Georgia with COVID. Yes. So, so obviously our, our discussion today is going to be around your service desk and customer service operations. Uh, as you mentioned, you guys are using and leveraging a lot of the ServiceNow suite and you yourself are a seven year ServiceNow enthusiast. Yes. Um, so you guys are fans of ServiceNow and I know, I know in your service desk, obviously, you know, ServiceNow prides itself on self-service digital channels, but today we're talking about voice customer service over a voice channel. Um, tell me, uh, is voice still an important part of the customer service value chain? Is it giving way to all things will be eventually uh, managed through self-service means? What is voice still important to Wellstar today? Absolutely. Um, you know, being a healthcare system, it is imperative that we get the assistance to the front lines and we really are on the front lines. So when, a doctor or a nurse, you know, needs some information or they need access, you know, almost immediately, the the easiest thing is for them to pick up a phone or to say, hey, can you call and and get this fixed immediately? So voice is very, very important to us at Wellstar. Um, Not saying that we aren't doing a lot of self-service. We have a service catalog in ServiceNow. Um, we are actually looking at some other things with 3C Logic that we'll talk about a little bit later, but um, but voice is not going away. Yep, yep. And so it's really going to be the distribution and and the balancing of self service digital channels for those repairs of tasks, so that you can reserve voice for those more complex, time sensitive types of inquiries. Right. Absolutely. All right. So knowing how important voice is to to your point. Uh, those types of use cases, it's not as if Wellstar, you know, pre 3C Logic and ServiceNow wasn't without its challenges, right? So I have a couple items here uh, that you had kindly provided as some of the highlights of what you were looking to solve for. The the first one being, you know, uh, (laughs) your biggest challenge was in part due to Wellstar's growth, right? Talk, Talk us through that. 
Absolutely. So over the last five years, um, Wellstar has expanded exponentially through a series of M&As. And as you can imagine, uh, even though we have expanded, our service desk has remained the same with a, a little bit of a change, but not exponentially. Um, so what we noticed, uh, especially with you know, as M&As come in, they don't know all of the processes or how to do things. So the easiest thing for um, the team member is to pick up the phone and call and say, how do I do this, right? So what we saw was just an ever increasing um, call volume to the service desk with, again, not increasing the folks. So in order to do that, you know, we had to look at some products and, and redesign the way we were working. So we were saying, okay, how do we still accomplish this large increase, uh, almost 50% increase in call volume with using the same number of folks or adding some additional contractors to help out um, in very peak times? And, and at the time, you guys were using Avaya as, as your primary system. Um, of course, one of the challenges was that it wasn't integrated with ServiceNow. And then, you know, I, I'm going to assume there was a, some inflexibility, especially when the pandemic hit, when it came to just the work from home uh, flexibility as well. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. So um, while Avaya was a great tool for us, it didn't have some of the things that we needed in order to move faster. One of those big key pieces was the integration with ServiceNow. Um, so we did not have that. Uh, so we needed a tool that could integrate with ServiceNow so that when the person called up, we knew exactly who they were and what other issues. Nothing more frustrating than when a clinician calls in and says, I just told you all of this information, right? So, um, so we looked at how do we, um, how are we able to fix that? And, and what about the convenience around managing the customer journey? So you mentioned that, you know, voice, if it were up to you, you'd reserve voice as a channel medium for things that are only complex and time sensitive. Um, and I'm assuming that uh, since it's always dealing ideally with emergencies, you know, those emergencies or, you know, are constantly shifting. So you have to change or be able to shift the customer experience, the, your agent allocation and so forth, skill sets uh, quickly and in accordance to that. And that was a, another challenge of yours as well, right? Absolutely. So um, a couple of pieces of that. One of them was when we were in situations where we had a incident, we couldn't easily identify that incident except in a pop-up on the computer. What we wanted to be able to do is to be able to make an emergency message on the system that was quick and easy that our service desk supervisors could do at very, you know, in a very quick manner so that they could say, oh, Wellstar is experiencing this issue. You know, if this, if your call is about this issue, please know that you know, we will, we will notify when it's up and ready. Otherwise, you know, go through our IVR system. So that was a huge game changer for us to be able to do that um, quite quickly without rebooting the systems and things like that. We could just punch it in, the computer read it, and then people moved on. So people got very used to that. So they actually used the system almost as an alert. Is something happening? Call the service desk and find out. Right. And, um, and you're reducing your need on technical resources to, to get to have those changes made. Right. You mentioned the supervisors are now doing this instead of having to maybe send a request to what was the Avaya team to, to, to then execute. Right. It, it is completely self-service at the service desk level for administration, um, which was huge for us. Um, and then the ability to and it, this kind of goes in line with the, our limited insights. Right. Um, we did not have um, a dashboard that showed us live what was happening on the system with our agents. That became even more important when our agents went remote because now our supervisors have the dashboard on their 
um, they, they have multiple screens, but on one of the screen, they have the dashboard. So even though they physically can't see the agents, um, you know, look up and see them in the room, they can see what's happening. So we're quickly able to identify, hey, we, we are, our call volume is going up because of an incident. Let's call, you know, a different agent in and ask them to join the shift early. Or, you know what, the call volume's going lower. So we can, we can um, allow people to take, you know, more stagnated lunches, or we can allow folks to, you know, leave early if they want to leave early on, on the day. So we did not have that before. And now we have a real time uh, dashboard that we can see all of the information and see what's happening in our service desk. And I know we've got some exciting things that uh, we're working towards with Wallstar to, to go even beyond what has already made a difference for you guys. In fact, let, let's use that as a segue into some of the the solution here a little bit. Obviously, you selected 3C Logic as a ServiceNow-centric voice solution to address some of the challenges that we just recently discussed, um, and notably some of the immediate benefits, uh, if we go through the, the short list here, was the ability to easily administer uh, a cloud-based solution and really have control over those voice workflows. We've already sort of alluded to the importance of having a solution that would integrate well with ServiceNow, uh, not just in terms of the day-to-day functionality, but also when it comes to the analysis that comes after the fact. So you can go back and understand where are the uh, challenges, uh, and most importantly, where are the trends that perhaps Wellstar would need to address. And last but not least, um, you know, obviously in deploying the 3C Logic solution, Wellstar was privy to some of the advanced AI capabilities that also help drive, uh, and in the future will drive even more, uh, ROI. I know you shared uh, a couple of KPIs. Let's get into some of those uh, metrics here. Uh, and, and take a look at some of the results that you guys have enjoyed so far. The first one, uh, I think the first two are really about agent benefits, is you know over 55% reduction in the average agent wrap-up time. Now, for our audience, wrap-up time is the, is the uh, time between calls where an agent presumably is, is putting in their notes, uh, concluding the outcome of the conversation they just had with the customer, maybe fulfilling or resolving the inquiry before they mark themselves available and go back into a state of availability to receive the next call. So sometimes wrap up time can eat into, you know, or, or, or if you have long wrap up times can lead to very long hold times for customers waiting for that next agent to, to come online. So tell us a little bit about what the impact for Wellstar has been and being able to reduce that, that number significantly. Yeah, absolutely. So previous to uh, 3C Logic, what our agents would do, they would get the call uh, they would have to open up the ServiceNow screen, um, go ahead, capture. A lot of times what they would do is they would capture the notes in Word or in the notepad because they wanted to make sure that they were talking to the person and not getting, you know, having to do that context switching. You know, when somebody's talking to you and you're like, oh, wait, hold on a second. I need to open up X or I need to go look at something. And, and then you missed what they were saying to begin with, right? So a lot of times what they would do to start with is they would open, they would have a notepad open and they would start typing the information. And then after the person was done talking, right? Then they would open up ServiceNow, start transcribing. And sometimes they wouldn't even transcribe. They would, they would end the call and then have to transcribe in a wrap up, um, which took an enormous amount of time. With the 3C logic and the ServiceNow integration, the call comes in, the user, because we use our employee ID as the, as the um, key, and when the, when the call comes in, it immediately pops up with the call screen in ServiceNow. The agent knows who you are, sees the history of your calls, and is able to start typing. When they hit the incident button, if it's an incident, right? All of that data immediately gets transcribed into the ServiceNow incident. So it's merely a, okay, great. We're done with the conversation. Either I've closed the incident or I have um, um, escalated the incident to our level two and they finish their conversation with the customer and they close the ticket. They hang up. Thank you very much for calling Wellstar. If there's anything else I can do for you, and then that, that wrap-up time is just the matter of 
you know, making sure they've got the assignment right, maybe sending, putting a work note and then hitting send so that the agent who is going to receive it on level two gets the email to say, hey, this is a little bit more context information about ticket number one, two, three, four that's coming in. Thanks. Let me know if you need me to call the, call the person back for more information. Boom, done. Um, and that has just been uh, a, um, from a, the, not only the user's experience, but the customer's experience, both of them, uh, it's been a much smoother transition. Yeah, so you're basically talking about removing some of those, you know, mundane manual tasks. You know, no one likes to enter information into a system. You need to do it for things to operate well, right? Right. Um, but at the same time, if we can automate that process, agents can do what it is that they enjoy doing more, which is helping the customer without having to worry about some of those administrative tasks. And some of the other things that I know you were able to solve for the agent was if, you know, you're allowing, you're giving them time back. Um, when you talk back to your earlier um, point with regards to leveraging information to know who to route to. You also saw the um, idle time with agents significantly reduce, almost 60%, meaning, I'm assuming uh, you can confirm this, that it meant that calls were going to the right agents. Agents weren't just sitting idly by waiting for the next call. Instead, the calls that they are most um, you know, skilled to address were automatically being routed to them. And they could, you know, they had the luxury to spend enough time there to solve the issue. I mean, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, again, when we had the other system, you know, basically it was, uh, you know, they would all just come in and we did have some calls that were routed um, to a different queue, um, but we didn't have the ability to really control the various, the calls to the, to the appropriate crews, um, queues, excuse me, with the appropriate agents. So now we're able to take advantage of all of that AI information and, um, or AI technology, I should say, and be able to, you know, take advantage of this, this idle time. We're also using our, our metrics with this. So being able to see the dashboarding. So a, a couple of examples, right? When, um, when we have the weekends or later in the afternoon when things are getting ready to switch off between um, shifts, we tend to see a lull. We never had that visibility before to be able to say, oh my goodness, we, it looks like the calls have dropped significantly and there's no calls in queue waiting to be answered. So therefore we can let you know, somebody go home early. And that is huge, especially when you're using um, contract labor uh, for some of the heavier times, like when we have go lives, we were able to say, you know what, we're low. Three of the contractors can, can sign off or, you know, would you like to, to leave early today? Um, believe it or not, it sounds like that you, it's almost counterintuitive, but people do. If they, if you say, "Hey, you want to, you want to leave an hour earlier," they're like, "Yes, thank you," uh, because um, it gives them a little bit more time back in their life. So, being able to have that, you know, not only with the um, intelligence of routing, but also with the dashboarding, has been significant for us to be able to um, really manage our workforce. And we've also saved not just the agent's time, improve maybe their, their you know, normal working day, but, and I think you alluded to this too earlier, we also saved you a few headaches, right? I mean, just in terms of Absolutely. some of the administration that goes into managing these types of environments, uh, just what kind of headaches did we solve for you? Right. Well, I, I talked about one already, which was the, um, the audit, right? At the end of the day, when, when we would have escalations, um, or the lack of customer experience, right? We spent a lot of time, myself and my manager, spent a lot of time looking for the data, listening to calls. Oh, that's not the right call. Let me listen to another one. Nope, that's not the right call. Let me listen to another one. And, and when you're listening to, you know, four or five minutes of calls and you're listening to 10 of them, it takes up a chunk of time. So just the connection of, the conversation with the ticket 
um, has saved us enormous amount of hours. Also reporting, we used to have to take the data, drop it to an Excel, be able to manip manipulate the data somehow, create the pivot tables, and then generate the, the um, reports. With 3C Logic, those dashboards um, are already available to us. So we can just snip a picture of the reporting. So now I, you know, we can now present to senior management the reporting that is available on the service desk and, you know, calls and wait time and uh, be able to just, you know, explain what's happening at, at the service desk much faster than having to try and download the, the data in an Excel spreadsheet and work just through Excel. Right, right, right. And I mean, everyone's time is valuable, but again, it's, you'd rather spend it, you know, driving outcomes instead of having to go to your point, spending a couple hours just finding the record before you can even start doing something about it, right? And, and, and I have a couple additional impacts uh, that sort of highlight or, or give a little bit more support to some of your stories. The first one being, I think you're kind of alluding to, this is really the first two points when it comes to agent optimization. I mean, you guys are saving something like 250 hours a month in agent productivity. And you were talking about the ability to send or having, you know, the ability to know when you can send a contractor home because there's no need for their services, you know, uh, something uh, along the lines of 18 full-time employees annually. Um, yes. You know, those are, those are, those are real numbers, Diane. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, that, that's the great thing. I, I had done some uh, to find these, um, this data, I had actually gone back um, even the year before I arrived at Wellstar, uh, looking at the numbers, and it really was impressive about how many folks. At one point, for a go live, we had almost eighty contractors to answer calls, um, and the the go live that we did afterwards, we had reduced that to forty five. Um, so that is a significant reduction in just needing contract uh, labor for a, for a large go live. So, um, so it really has made a huge um, impact in the amount of um, money we've had to outlay for the service desk. And again, we're talking about during a pandemic when call volume went up, I think you said it almost doubled. Did. Without without having to increase, in fact, you were able to reduce your headcount, uh, all the while improving, you know, uh, and hitting on some of those, you know, impressive new uh, metrics. Not to mention the customer experience, the you know, quality of life, the fact that everyone's now working from home, and you're able to actually improve the overall operations despite all of those additional hurdles that were obviously. <laughs> You know, pre-pandemic, you know, you were already busy without, without uh, you know, the COVID impact uh, notwithstanding. But, but right. one of the things I thought was interesting is you mentioned, you know, improved behavioral understanding of the callers. So I'm assuming that ties back to, you know, uh, being able to leverage ServiceNow as that uh, system of record to have that historical reference uh, to know why a person or why people have called in the past, what might their profile look like? And how to you know you know connect them to the right individual depending on what their new inquiry might be. Is that what we're alluding to here? Um, yeah, that and and a few other things. So so first of all, um, you know, being able to have that connection, we remember they do a lot of transcribing what the what the um, person calling in says. You know, so they'll sometimes they'll just type in the record. You know, exactly the phrase, and then based on what that person is telling them, it'll go to a different agent or a, a different level two. Sometimes what, we've, what we noticed, and we, we have um, reports in ServiceNow that tell us when um, the tickets have been reassigned. And when we look at those reassigned tickets, what we have been finding is we've been able to go back to the beginning and redo playbooks based on what people are saying. So as we learn what people are telling us, we're like, oh, really, that actually means this. So when you hear people say this, 
make sure you give it to, you know, the appropriate team, not what you were thinking about before. So we've been able to modify our playbooks and get to the, uh, well, bring down the reassignment uh, substantially. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, I, I know we've been focusing a lot on the agent experience, but something we should highlight in part due and thanks to the deep integration between 3C Logic and your use of the ServiceNow platform. And I know that we're working on some, some really cool use cases as we speak for Wellstar. But, you know, voice doesn't always, as a service channel, doesn't always have to be with another live agent. There's also self-service use cases. I think uh, an example for Wellstar is, is password resets. I mean, who, <laughs> who knew that password resets was still, you know, as aggravating a thing as it is? But that's, that's also something that uh, Wellstar is looking to pursue, right? Which is self-service use cases for people calling in without necessarily impacting the customer experience, right? Absolutely. So what, what the experience will be is when they call the service desk, um, it will say, are you requesting a password reset? You know, if yes, press one, right? It will take them into a completely different, uh, not a different system, but a different queue. And what will happen is that experience will be, okay, here's some information that we need. And they'll punch it into the phone, um, that information that's needed. It will go into ServiceNow. ServiceNow will talk to Active Directory. It will be able to validate and confirm that that is the person who um, is requesting it. It will send back a temporary password and the IVR system will say, okay, great. Here is your temporary password. You know, you will be prompted to change your password as soon as you um, as soon as you enter the system, so that way we can again uh, try to make that customer experience that much easier. I mean, at the end of the day, they don't really want to talk to people, but they do want it fast. And we all know that it's much easier to pick up the phone and phone a friend than to send a message out and wait for that message to be read and then responded to. That's right. That's right. And again, whether it's a prompt-based IVR or moving towards natural language understanding, or it's a conversation between the, the voice bot, if you will, and the customer, in, you know, so that we can determine intent, ultimately the outcome is the same. To your point, whether I'm talking to a, a, an AI, a machine, or I'm talking to an agent, doesn't matter so much as Am I having my issue resolved in a timely fashion? And most importantly, operationally for you, I'm assuming has a lot to do with, can I make sure that my human assets are really only used for those things that go beyond what um, AI machine learning can, can safely serve or, or, or solve for today. But th that kind of gets me excited about some of the things that you, I know you guys are in the process of rolling out. One which speaks to the auditing process. I mean, I know today it's a lot easier to source um, and find the records, the call records, because they're automatically associated to the appropriate records within ServiceNow, but that's still somewhat manual. One of the things that uh, we're exploring with uh, Wellstar is uh, the deployment of speech analytics, where you were talking about transcription. Everything now is transcribed, not just the call recording, but the transcription of the call recording. And then an, an uh, AI is doing the analysis of the customer experience, that engagement, was it good? Was it uh, positive, negative, neutral? What were the attributes of the call? putting that in service now to then really automate the assessment process, the auditing process and help auto flag those events that may or may not be deserving of say your input or supervisor's input. I'm assuming that's a pretty exciting uh, project that we have working with you right now. It is, um, we're, we're really hoping a, a lot to come of this and a lot of it is diffusing the situation. We would rather diffuse the situation as, as it's, happening or right after it occurred, rather than wait for things to stew. I mean, just think about humans, human behavior, right? If the longer we have to think about a situation, the angrier we get, right? So the quicker we can immediately identify when we have an issue, the, the faster we can diffuse that. Uh -huh. 
And then, of course, you're also talking about skill-based routing, which we've kind of talked through over the course of this discussion, yes. which is how much can we use uh, or, or maximize the use of the information and service now with combined with what we do, you know, from a voice workflow perspective within 3C Logic to really optimize how quickly you can get an individual to the appropriate person with the right skills um, to service their inquiry. And that could be using AI, it could be using just uh, you know, advanced intelligence or a combination of the two, but ultimately the outcome is better experience for the agent, obviously a better experience for the customer, and operationally it's just gonna save you time and time is ultimately money, is that right? That, that is correct. Um, we would also like to take advantage of, we have several seasoned agents on our team, people that have been with us for 10 plus years. They, as we love to say, they know where all the bodies are, right? So um, we, they just know the system intimately. So we need them to be able to um, take those calls, maybe the calls that are specifically for um, physicians, because we have a physicians only line. So we would like them to handle that. Uh, whereas maybe the, the questions about desktop support, or the questions about password reset, or you know, maybe they maybe they didn't want to use the password reset option, and they just wanted to talk to somebody. Those we can give to our um, our beginning agents. You know, the, the the agents maybe that are contractors that don't know our system intimately. That that's one of the main reasons we want to use it. Move the low hanging fruit to the. Um, to the less expensive resource uh, and then take advantage of the experience with the more, um, the more challenging questions that we have. And that all makes sense. So with that, I mean, for our audience, if you haven't figured it out yet in terms of what 3C Logic does and most importantly, what it's done for Wellstar, we are a, for all intents and purposes, a voice workflow, a cloud contact center solution. We also do SMS that's really developed over the years, a very service now centric solution that's very complementary to any help desk, whether it's an IT, customer service management, or even uh, with employee workflows. So we're in an HR capacity. And we've been doing this uh, for a number of years with ServiceNow, with ServiceNow customers now spanning five continents, typically uh, global 2000, uh, with uh, you know, the, the experience that we bring to the table as a ServiceNow technology partner and the number one ranked application uh, or integration on the ServiceNow store. And because we're a cloud solution built on Amazon Cloud, we have the scalability uh, of, uh, <laughs> or we're only limited by scale uh, by that of AWS, which is, well, for all intents and purposes, uh, limitless. Diane, I wanna thank you for, for taking the time uh, to, to share your experience at Wellstar. I know on behalf of the 3C Logic team, we're certainly excited to continue our partnership We've already talked about some of the additional things that we're working on with you. For those of you who have questions, you can always reach us at info at 3clogic.com. Again, that's info at 3clogic.com. But again, Diane, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you for taking the yeah. time. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking soon. We will. Thank you, everybody. See you, Diane.